My name is Laura Conde. Um, I work for WESA here in, in the Eastern Cape. I'm the regional manager for the one part of the Eastern Cape and have been in working in Port St. John's for the past 10 years or so. The Subane Forest Project, which is near the Port St. John's area, is a, a section of, of the wild coast uh, between Port St. John's and Rusikitsiki. So in this area we find that there are pockets of coastal forests uh, remaining and there's definitely potential for linking up these, um, these forest um, nodes or pockets together through some rehabilitation, forest rehabilitation work. Um, so that has become one of the components of, of the overall project is how we start linking up uh, this corridor. But also at the same time we look at um, how people are um, using or making use of, of forest products in a more sustainable way. Um, here, this, this whole area, is, um, as you can see, is a, is a rural area and uh, forest products are used on everyday life, from uh, craft development to building houses, medicinal purposes, etc. So part of our work has entailed to, to work with communities at, at village level particularly and look at the, the current practice and then looking at how this practice can, you know, can um, uh, be improved and of course we think you know, all the challenges that people are faced with. Then what we also intended to do is to kind of to locate each, each village within the bigger picture. So for that purpose we brought representatives of, of the different forest areas or villages together to start sort of mapping out how they see themselves uh, working together in, sort of, you know, in, a, in a common goal. Um, and to do that um, we also had to bring on board different stakeholders. Of course we are talking about state forest and communal forest so the Department of Forestry had to um, um, be a uh, you know, critical um, stakeholder of, of the project to sort of again map out the challenges that they face with communities and again then facilitate you know, um, the relationship between um, local communities and, you know, and the forest guards or forest managers and that, that has been one of, one of the aspects that has taken quite a lot of time to, you know, to build up and to to find you know, the, uh, a good way of, of working together. We had identified as well that um, there are particular uh, crafters um, that uh, rely heavily on selling the, the craft to either locally or, or from Port St. John's to, to local tourists. So we, we have um, identified key crafters who have an entrepreneur mind to, to grow their business and um, as a result we brought um, specialists I would say in, in that field to work with the crafters directly to uh, be able to uh, improve the product, to price the product accordingly uh, so more of a fair trade you know, um, uh, pricing so they're not exploited by you know, buyers and, and of course to start setting up their own business and the crafters have um, uh, grouped themselves now in a, in, a, in a sort of an association. So they, they, they're coming together to, to strengthen their business and work together. And also work uh, alongside with the Forest Users Association um, in Port St. John's. I mean, the association has been established for a number of years. And that was how this project initiated. You know, it came from the association themselves, identifying the, the challenges that they were facing with the, in the local forests. And yes, we hope that all together, um, through the different associations and groups, um, people can increase their capacity or capability to use the natural resources better, to improve their lives and. Um, and to live and yeah, in harmony with one and another. <laughs> so I would say in the one year period, the one main aspect, uh, amongst others, is that we, we have managed to develop a good relationship in the villages, the 15 villages that uh, we have had interactions with. 
It's not, you know, an employment type of project. Of course, there is an employment aspect, but it's more about uh, working with people in, in developing, you know, capacity for uh, sustainable uh, natural resource use. So I think that is now has been put across quite quite well. Um, yeah, and we feel that uh, as a result of the one year, we have tested how people can work together in uh, rehabilitating and looking after the forest, and we are ready for expansion. One of the critical outcomes is that, again, leadership can see the benefit of what we're trying to do, particularly both in uh, traditional leadership as well as the political leadership in the area. Of course, working with uh, the headmen and the chiefs uh, is important because at the end of the day they make decisions of how land and, and natural resources are utilized. So, um, I mean, an example of that would be if, if, if a, a family um, needs to extend, you know, their household, uh, the chief or the, or the headman will decide where the new household will be located. Of course, the household can be located in the middle of a forest, so that forest, you know, could could again be yeah taken down and for for that purpose. So so working in in kind of land use planning exercises, it, it will need to be emphasised going forward.